passed. And they hassle, and they, but he does it in such a way that it increases their love for him. That's the difference between us and Krishna. When we do something rascal, it just makes trouble. <laughs> but when Krishna does something rascal, it's lovable. Uh, and it just increases everyone's attachment for Krishna. So we can understand that Krishna has all good qualities. Because even when he does something rascal, it's beautiful and it's attractive. So not that we can imitate that. We shouldn't imitate that. Uh, but we should all develop our relationship with Krishna. And then if our relationships are based on our relationship with Krishna, then our relationships also become transcendental. And then we don't have to worry about exploitation and um, deception and, you know, all kinds of sinful activities like normally happens in relationships. Uh, because the only reason that we have a relationship is to serve Krishna. And that relationship is pure. So our, our interpersonal relationships are also pure when they're based on that relationship. Now where the problems come in is when people just pretend to have a relationship with Krishna so that they can have a particular kind of relationship with other people. And we see this going on in certain religious organizations that we all know who they are, <laughs> right? Where people will pretend to be a pure devotee or pretend to be a spiritual master just so that they can get nice accommodations and nice food and, you know, people paying a lot of attention to them and all that kind of stuff. But really, they don't have a service attitude at all. They, exactly the opposite. They, have, they want to be served. And so they pretend to be something that they're not huh? and give some, some of their followers a, a false relationship with Krishna. That leads to all kinds of trouble, as we have seen. How do we know if we're involved in a phony relationship like that? Well, we're not happy. Make huh? them sing. What? Yeah, make them <laughs> sing. What did you? What did you say? The first thing that you, when you came here yesterday, Uddhava? Uh, uh, when I saw everyone. So everyone, the first impression I got is, oh, they are happy, you know. And I said, I haven't seen happy people in a year or more, even though you were there <laughs> in Mexico City. He wasn't happy yet. <laughs> you were not happy. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's like uh, happiness was forgotten in the city. You don't see happy people nowhere. And there's nowhere to find them. Very impressive. Oh, one can be happy in this world. <laughs> Look, those who are happy are drunk. But now they're not happy. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, no, that's just smiling like pink balls. Yeah, but now you, you see them and they're suffering. Yeah. Because they're dependent on something outside for their happiness. They're not enjoying their intrinsic happiness. They're not enjoying happiness that's based on consciousness. Huh? Like we were saying last night, when your consciousness contemplates something of a transcendental nature, huh? of a nature that matches its own, then you automatically experience joy. You don't need intoxication. You don't need any outside objects of the senses or something like that to experience happiness. Happiness is there automatically as soon as the consciousness is whole, as soon as consciousness is one, as soon as consciousness is clear or in its normal state. And what is its normal state? It's transcendental. Uh, when consciousness is transcendental, it means it's concentrated on a transcendental object. And this is the actual technique of yoga. Yoga means, as uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, yoga yuktam prasanatma, na sochati na kangshati. Uh, 
It says when the yogi's mind is when when someone is really in yoga, uh, prasan atma, he, his his atma, his consciousness is filled with joy, prasana. Uh, no sochati, no kanchati, no worries, no anxieties, uh, and also no desires. He doesn't lament. He doesn't want to have anything. All he wants to do is concentrate his mind on this transcendental nature because it's so beautiful. Our mind's automatically attracted by beauty. Huh? And what is more beautiful than the original nature of the self? You see? So if someone is unhappy, if someone is agitated, if someone is striving very hard for something in the world, uh, or to have some position in some organization or something like that. They haven't even understood the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, because if they actually understood that they're a spirit soul and that they are complete and whole and eternal and they have no need for any outside source of enjoyment, they would be happy all the time. Uh, if I know that all I have to do is sit down and contemplate the nature of my own self, my own consciousness, and I can be happy. Now, this is called Brahman realization. If I can be happy just by that, then what do I need with any outside source of happiness? Why do I have to strive so hard to be happy? Why do I have to work so hard? Why do I have to try to exploit others? Why do I have to try so hard to get money or this or that to be happy when the source of happiness is already there inside myself? I don't need anything to be happy. As long as I can keep my body and soul together, then I can sit down under a tree and be happy in a second. <laughs> really, you know, just like that. Huh? Just by contemplating in the right way. Once I learned this yoga, uh, so Krishna goes to great lengths to explain all these different yoga techniques to Arjuna. But in the end, Arjuna rejects them. Why? He says, because the mind is very difficult to control. He says, I think this uh, trying to control the mind is as futile as trying to control the wind. So how can I do this, Krishna? I'm a great king and politician. And there's all these people trying to kill me. <laughs> How can I control my mind? This is, you know, impossible. I can't do this, Krishna. You have to come up with some other way. Right? So then Krishna describes bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga leads to paramatma realization and bhagavan realization. And these are even higher than brahman realization. Uh, so what to speak of, of happiness... Uh, happiness is easy. That's just the first stage of realization, the most neophyte, beginner stage of realization. The real happiness or the real joy comes in the higher stages of Paramatma and Bhagavan realization, which we can easily have through the Holy Name. Uh, it's very, very simple, very, very easy. You just chant your Guru-given mantra without offenses, and study the Vedas and try to understand this whole process. And then over time, it does take some time, huh? it takes some discipline, then Cheto Darpana Marjanam, the mirror of the mind is cleansed. Okay? We don't really see things directly. We see things as reflected by our mind. And according to our ontology, or the mental constructs and categories with which we view reality, that's how we understand what we see. But we don't see the reality directly itself, but we see some interpretation of that reality according to our understanding. Just, I made the, ex the example so many times, two people standing in a temple, and one is having this intense religious experience, and the other one is like, ho-hum, when are we going to leave, you know? The two people standing right next to each other, the same place and time, 
having the same kind of experience as far as their outward senses. But because they each give it a different meaning, they're having a completely different experience. So this is due to the difference in their ontology. This is due to the difference in their interpretation of what they're experiencing. So in the same way, everything that we experience, it can be pleasurable or painful. It can be fun or it can be boring. It can be fulfilling and satisfying or it can be very frustrating, just depending on what we bring to that experience, our background, our consciousness, our ontology. When we have a transcendental ontology, then everything we experience is wonderful because it's all in relationship with Krishna. We see Krishna in everything and we experience Krishna by every action that we do because every action is dedicated to Krishna in service. 